Spreader flaps are employed in reduction rhinoplasty to maintain the width of the middle nasal vault. To create the flaps, bilateral mucoperichondrial flaps are elevated as a preliminary step. The upper lateral cartilages are separated from the cartilaginous dorsum, preserving the full height of the cartilages. It is rarely necessary to separate the upper lateral cartilages from the caudal aspect of the bony hump deformity before removal of the hump. The bony hump is removed with an osteotome or nasal rasp. Spreader flaps are created by folding the free medial border of the upper lateral cartilages inward on themselves. This caudal view demonstrates how the upper lateral cartilages are folded inward on themselves. Horizontal mattress sutures are used to secure the folded cartilages to the cartilaginous septum. Only two or three mattress sutures are required on each side to secure the flaps in place. The tension of the mattress sutures are adjusted to in turn adjust the width of the spreader flaps. After raising bilateral septal mucoperichondrial flaps and detaching the upper lateral cartilages from the septum, the cartilaginous septum is lowered using a scalpel. The bony hump is removed using an osteotome or nasal rasp. Beginning at the caudal aspect of the nasal bones, an upper lateral cartilage is folded on itself and sutured to the cartilaginous septum with horizontal mattress sutures. Prior to suturing the spreader flaps, it is important to replace the nasal skin and assess the nasal profile to ensure that the cartilaginous septum and bony hump have been sufficiently lowered to provide an ideal profile. A 5-0 proline attached to an RB1 needle is an ideal suture for securing the spreader flaps. This needle is tapered and does not cut the delicate upper lateral cartilages. It is not necessary to score the upper lateral cartilage before creating the spreader flap. When suturing the second spreader flap, it is often easier to place the mattress suture through both upper lateral cartilages using a single penetration of the needle rather than attempting to confine the mattress suture to only the cartilaginous septum and the spreader flap being sutured. It is important to not tighten the mattress suture excessively, which could overly narrow the spreader flap. Spreader flaps eliminate the need for using spreader grafts. Their width is adjusted by varying the tension of the horizontal mattress suture used to secure the flaps to the cartilaginous septum. After the spreader flaps are secured to the septum, the mucoperichondrial flaps are opposed to the septum using a continuous transseptal mattress suture. Osteotomies to close the open roof are then performed. 